Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today we're going to cover the top seven tips when learning any new language. Yeah, great. Hey everyone, it's Joe here from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And today we're talking about seven tips when you're learning any new language. These are great tips to follow. So I think we got a really nice solid list here. Let's jump right into it. One of the first ones, which Jack and I have talked a lot about over the last several years is have a friend or mentor to talk to, and especially someone who's actually experienced in this language, ask them to give you like a 20 minute introductory to it because it's a lifesaver. It can save you so much time of deciding many things that they're going to know that you don't know. So having someone you know you know, kind of introduce you to it is a great time saver. Yeah, it gives you great opportunity to actually ask questions and stuff like that with someone you probably know or have some kind of rapport with already. So, so yeah, it's it's a great one. And the next one uh, here is get an IDE that that works well with the language, right? Uh, not just not always the one you already know. It might work or it might be adaptable to working. Uh, you, you know, Notepad probably isn't the right choice either. So go with an IDE that is maybe recommended for that language. It's so easy to say, hey, look, I can use this. You know, let's say Sight is a great example, right? Hey, if there's a plugin for Sight, which may still well be the right editor to use for it. However, Often, if it doesn't have all the functionality or even just pulling up the help file like you can without a hotkey, right, when it's built into it, mm -hmm. it's so, so helpful. So spend a little time making sure you get a good, solid IDE. It's, it's really critical. And the next one is also a great one because I learned this with Python and it's also without a hotkey is when you start in a programming language, they might be in some transition between an older version and a newer version. And the worst thing you can do is start learning one and realize like, you know, six months later or whatever, that that language is actually on the outs and there's a newer version of it that they're starting with. And so why not, you know, spend a little time up front. And I'm not talking a lot of time, maybe it's 20 minutes just to make sure that there's not a new one that you really should probably start with. Yeah. And it, this of course works with coding languages and all that, but it would be the same if you landed somewhere and started learning a weird accents, uh, accent in, in some kind of uh, country, right? It, make sure that you're learning something that makes uh, the most sense. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a great analogy, Jackie. So we're like here for me, I'm in the US and there's, you know, Spanish is spoken in Mexico, but let's say I, hey, I'm going to go get an online course for learning Spanish, but I happen to get one that's popular in Puerto Rico, somewhere else, right? I might learn these weird, <laughs> and I travel there. <laughs> they're like, what, what the hell are you trying to say? Because it was a slightly different dialect. I, that's a great analogy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the next one we have is um, block off a couple of hours, right? So where you can focus and, and deep dive into the language, either the documentation or examples or um, uh, a course or whatever it might be, but take out that block of time and actually uh, do focus and sit there with it instead of just trying to solve whatever you're hoping to use it for try and, and really get into some of those uh, deeper aspects because it can save you time at the forefront if you already know stuff like that yeah and, and we know with anything when you start something new it, it takes more time right so whatever you do don't say hey you know what i got an extra 20 minutes i think i'm going to take a look at whatever language you know ruby like that's just not enough time to really get in there you're just wasting your time right so it's it's better to have i'd say at least two hours to say i i can do a you know quite a bit more and do a good job of my first steps into it because otherwise you're just you're end up wasting your time yeah the next one which kind of adds on to that is whatever you do you know, what i always do is start find something that already works that someone else has done and then tweak it don't necessarily start writing fresh code from scratch because then it's really hard to tell if what you're doing is you know you're breaking it because you don't know what you're doing 
you know, or it's it's something else. But if you borrow someone else's stuff and you can get it to run and then start tweaking it, it's so much easier to understand what you're doing wrong and what works and, and everything else. Yeah, and that's where, where courses and stuff like that, where they actually give you a code examples and, and uh, right. t- small bits you can run and or need to tweak and stuff. That, that's where those really come into uh, effect and, and really help you along. Um, I, I'd say that the next one we have is uh, learn how to use the debugging tool, right? Because coding is debugging. It, it is one of the best terms you, you can remember, right? So sitting there trying to run that first hello world and it's just not working, right? It, it, it's a good idea to figure out uh, what tools are available to you in that language or in that IDE or whatever you're using because <laughs> you will need to debug uh, so many times. Right. And and that phrase, coding is debugging, to me, I'm like, I need that bumper sticker because it's so true, right? Like everyone thinks, oh, I'm just going to write some code in, in a run. It's, it's always you get something down, but then you got to make it work. Right. And when you actually learn some really good debugging tools and you can step into things and see what's in that variable or in an object and be able to do stuff, it it saves you so much time in the long run. That's again, spend a little more time up front learning those things because it's it's a multiplier. It helps you so much down the road. It's kind of like saying I'm going to be a programmer, but I don't learn how to type. Right. I mean, it's like it's a huge multiplier. Learn, spend a little time learning the debugger. Uh, and then a finally is, is you know, understand some of the resources like Stack Overflow uh, or maybe there's a, a specific forum or a subreddit or YouTube. Right. Find a channel and be able to use that as a, a great resource and possibly, of course, to go there and ask questions to help, you know, get some quick answers from people who know what they're doing. Yeah. A, a community can really, really help. Right. And and. It can be more or less toxic, but it can be a great place to to either hopefully be known in a positive way, right? Because even if you ask those newbie questions at the beginning, if you do that well, and if people see you um, moving along, uh, actually taking their advice to heart or whatever it might be, um, they'll welcome you in whatever place you choose to go to. Yeah, we have a, a podcast. I'll try to remember to link to it. Uh, but it's a really good point, Jackie. Is when you do ask a question in in any of the any community, uh, do your homework first before. Don't just ask how do I. Hey, this doesn't work, right? Like that is that's not going to get you a good response, right? There's there's special things you can do, and that's why we covered an entire podcast of here's the best way to make sure you get a good answer is by asking it in a certain way. I remember the phrase. A short question requires a really long answer and a long question requires a short answer, right? And that's what people that are helping you, they don't want to do long answers, right? No one has time. They want to do short answers. And it's so much easier if you spend time up front asking your question properly. It it helps everyone. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, if you guys have anything else you think we should have included in this list, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah, bye, Joe.